walk over there? Yeah. Hannah, can we walk over there?
Senator, did you see the Vice President? Hey guys, how are you? Good. Uh, I just I just wanted to check out my future plane, but I also wanted to go say hello to the Vice President and ask her why Kamala Harris refuses, why does she refuse to answer questions from the media? And I also thought that the press gaggle following her might get a little lonely. I at least have enough respect for you all and for the American people you report to to come and talk to you and to answer some questions. And so I thought uh, her reporters might actually benefit from that as well. So had a little bit of fun. Uh, I don't think the vice president waved at me as she drove away, but uh, I'm glad to have done it. And I'm glad to he be here in Wisconsin actually trying to persuade people to vote for us as opposed to just giving another scripted speech. Did you, did, you did see the vice president. I one. saw her car. I did not see the vice president. The windows are tinted. Did you get to speak with the state again? I did not speak to her, no. I, I don't. I, I think she was trying to get the hell out of there as quickly as possible. But I did speak to a lot of the press gaggle following her. Do you think it's effective to essentially tail her trail uh, the rest of this week or during this week as well? Well, clearly we think it, it's effective because we're here, right? I mean, look, there are six or seven states that are going to decide the entire election. We think it's important to get out there and to talk to people to make the best case that we can. And obviously there's an element of especially local media is going to cover her because she's the vice president and the presumptive nominee. So we think it's important to have a counter narrative here and importantly to drive home this point that she has been a dangerous radical. She has pursued very far left policies from defunding the police to opening the American southern border to increasing the price of housing and groceries on Americans. This, th this happened because of her policies, and I think it's important that the American people actually know that. And again, I really can't believe she's been the presumptive nominee for 17 days, and she hasn't taken a real question from reporters. Did Walter return your phone call? I'm oh, sorry? Did the governor return your phone call yesterday? Uh, he actually did, but he left him a voicemail. I, was, I, I think I was on the plane yesterday evening when he called me back. Well, I, haven't, I haven't talked to him since. President Trump said in Atlanta over the weekend uh, at your joint rally that uh, you have to define it before cars and define Kamala Harris. Is sure. she harder to define than President Biden? No, I think she's actually, it? I think Kamala Harris is easier to define because President Biden, because there are so many absurd video clips of her saying things that are totally outside the mainstream. I mean, this is not like a person where you have to guess at what she believes. She said, I wanted to fund the police. She said, I want to give Medicare to illegal aliens. She said that she wanted to decriminalize all illegal immigration, and it's on video. So defining her is not hard, but that is the work of a campaign, right? We've got 92 days to tell the truth, the truth that Donald Trump delivered peace and prosperity, the truth that Kamala Harris has delivered an open border and rising prices. It's not a hard case to make, but it's why we do what we do. There's been some concern that some of the attacks from Donald Trump on Harris have been distracting, and there's been comments made that Republicans should focus on things like immigration and crime and the border. I'm sure. curious what you say to critics who are worried that Trump is sort of yeah, I mean, I don't know anybody who could listen to President Trump over the last couple weeks and say that he's not talking about immigration or crime or the fact that Kamala Harris's policies led to rising inflation. He's talking about all that stuff. But one of the reasons why he's been both an effective president but a, a guy that a lot of Americans identify with is, yeah, he's going to tell some jokes. He's going to mix it up from time to time. He's not going to be a boring state American politician. He's going to be who he actually is. And I think that's the source of the success. Uh, but I, I, look, if you listen to what President Trump is saying, he is really prosecuting the case on Kamala Harris led to the open border. Kamala Harris cost the tie, cast the tie-breaking vote that led to skyrocketing inflation. Kamala Harris cast the tie-breaking vote that led to higher interest rates. She's done all of these things. And I think President Trump's been very on message, not just the past couple of weeks, the past couple of years. I'm going to ask you about your law and order yeah. message this morning. But sure. just to follow up, what, what was the message from Walls on voice? What was the message from Governor Walton? Oh, I see. Well, well no, I, I called him to congratulate yeah. him either yesterday or the day before. Sorry, time's moving. Yeah, yeah. But he I called you yesterday, and then he just called me back. Yeah. Did he leave a message? Um, yeah, it was just, you know, hey, thanks for calling. Appreciate it. Look forward to the debate. Got it. Et cetera. This morning you were talking about law and order, uh, the policy decisions. I wanted to ask you about some comments you made a couple of years ago about uh, when Trump wins, that yeah. he should get rid of all of the uh, – staff in Washington, replace them with all of our own guys, right? Yeah. The Andrew Jackson stuff. And then to, you know, the, the judges sure. rule, let them enforce it. Can you elaborate on that? And were you really talking about blatantly defying a court ruling? I think it's about democratic accountability. I mean, look, the Article 2 of the U.S. Constitution says the president is the commander in chief. If, say, for example, a military general doesn't listen to the president of the United States, the president has to be able to fire that person. And that is core to what the president is able to do. That's core to our entire constitutional system. What I said then, and I would say now, is 
one of the problems with the first Trump administration is you did have bureaucrats who didn't listen to the people's elected president. That has to change in a second Trump administration. And look, I, I think you have to be willing to fire people who disobey the president of the United States. If you can't, the president isn't in charge of the government. The people aren't in charge of the government. Then the bureaucrats are, and that's something I would. Well, get the question rid of. is not really about whether to fire people. The question is about whether, if that was blocked by the courts, if, if one of those moves was blocked by the courts, do you think that that? No. What, what, what I said is, in the hypothetical where you yeah. have something core to the president's Article Two functions, where he is trying to fire a person in his own government, he has to be able to do that. And if the courts tried to stop him, that would actually be a constitutional crisis instigated by the courts. I don't think they would do that, though. I think most justices, most judges, even those on the left, recognize the president has to be able to control who works for him in government. Sir, yeah. uh, Trump has spoken several times calling Kamala Harris Kamala Blah. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Do you know what that's about, and are you going to start calling her that too? I haven't talked to him about it. I'm not planning on call her, calling her Kamala Blah. Um, I, I actually talked to the president yesterday, but we didn't talk about that. Look, I think the president, obviously, he loves to give people nicknames, and I think that uh, he's going to keep on doing that. I would be shocked if it's the last nickname he gives her before the end of the election. Senator, yeah. $36 million raised in 24 hours for the Harris campaign to stay since Walsh has announced. Yeah. Your thoughts on that? Uh, look, I mean, obviously, uh, Democrats are going to raise a lot of money because they stand up for Wall Street. They stand up for the big banks. And I'm not shocked that you're going to have a lot of big money donors coming in for the Kamala Harris campaign. She was their preferred candidate. Remember, she was the candidate who, sh who encouraged and supported NAFTA. She wasn't in there when it was initially enacted, but she continued to reauthorize it and support it. That led to the decimation of a lot of manufacturing jobs. But it also made a lot of people in this country rich. So I'm not surprised that those people who have benefited from her policies are giving her money. I think the question is, most Americans have not benefited from her policies. They're not going to give her her vote. I just want to ask about the, uh, the yeah, your right. accusation this we'll, morning we'll about, here, yeah. about the, the uh, abandoning his, uh, his fellow soldiers. Yeah. Um, are, are you basing that on anything more than a Facebook post? Uh, and, and, and how do you feel about I mean, these are, as you oh, know, yeah, no, serious you know, accusations. Yeah, sure. As well, like, I mean, uh, uh, your running mate has faced similar accusations about vote avoiding service uh, because of bone spurs. Do you think do you think that is accurate and, and fair to, uh, for Trump to face? Well, look, that well, look the difference, Mike, between yeah. what President Trump has said and done and what Waltz has said and done is that President Trump didn't lie, right? President Trump did not serve in the United States military. He's never claimed that he did. Uh, Waltz did say on camera that I carried a gun in a war. Well, which war did you carry a gun in? Because you apparently never went to a war zone. That is a totally reasonable question to ask. And I think the evidence at this point is overwhelming that he lied about serving in a combat zone. By the way, I served in a combat zone. I answered the call. I've never lied about my military service. He clearly has. There was another quote I actually just saw a couple of hours ago where he apparently said that he fought in Iraq, or at least a journalist reported that he said he fought in Iraq. Well, if he said that, that is a lie. And we have to be willing to call people out. Lying about your military service in order to procure political points, that's really disgraceful conduct. It's a slap in the face to millions of American veterans. And I think it's totally reasonable to you call them out. in Iraq? I served in a combat zone. I never said that I saw a firefight myself, but I've always told the truth about my Marine Corps service. That's the difference between me and Tim Walsh. I just want to make sure they, they, they have not Thanks, seen the firefight. Thank you, guys.